So hi and welcome to our Intergeo Expert Talk. As part of Intergeo 2023, we are proud to present a brand new thematic area focusing on unmanned systems. This exciting domain will showcase the latest developments and applications of unmanned systems in realms of air, water and land. And today, especially, we are thrilled to dive into the world of maritime solutions and explore the depth of our oceans. And throughout our discussions, we will gain valuable insights into the significance of our oceans, highlighting their vital role and shedding light on the fascinating topic of marine conservation. So let me briefly introduce my guests today of this Intergeo Expert Talk. Thomas Deling is the head of the Nautical Hydrography Department at the Federal Maritime and Hydrographic Agency in Germany and leads the agency in Rostock. Prior to his position, he was in charge of the Department of Surveying and Hydrography, as well as the Division of Surveying and Rec Search from 1998 to 1999. He currently serves as the chairman of the German Hydrographic Society and represents Germany at the International Hydrographic Organization in Monaco. And Thomas studied surveying at the University of Federal Armed Forces in Munich. Hi and welcome, Thomas. <laughs> what a Hello, great my pleasure. View. <laughs> great to have you here. So let's look at our next guest. Jan Wendt is founder and managing director of North IO in Kiel, Germany, and initiator of Marispace X. He is dedicated to innovation through cloud technologies and geodata. Data, of course. And his core area is maritime solutions based on modern technology, web based, location independent, and scalable. He holds a master's degree in environmental geography and management from Christian Albrecht's University in Kiel. And here they are both. Hi, Jan. Welcome to you. <laughs> Hi. Nice to be here. So let's start and uh, dive into our talk. And let's start with three short questions about that topic. And um, well... Many, many people around the world have followed the great disaster of the failed submarine dive um, to the Titanic. And um, it was in the news and yeah, everybody was thrilled about that topic. And if you had received an invitation as experts of the oceans and also the things that can happen there, would you have been on board the Titan, Thomas? <laughs> um. Oh, for me, it would it wouldn't be an opportunity. I I, th I would say no. Uh, it's it's too touristic uh, in my view, and uh, and a bit uh, lurid to say. And uh, also, it's uh, there have been some issues about the arguable uh, safety of this uh, submarine. And I I would also uh, like to give more respect to to, to the sailors' graves down there. Mm. Jan, would you have joined that exciting tour if somebody gave you a ticket for a quarter million euro? Uh, probably I also wouldn't wouldn't have joined. I agree on uh, what Thomas Dilling uh, just said several points of this one. And um, I think uh, our job is also a bit different. I mean, we are looking from uh, the top actually uh, into uh, the ocean and try to get a picture based on, on this by remote sensing technology, by, by acoustics and not by actually diving into um, yeah, uh, a war gra uh, graveyard uh, uh, underwater. So I also probably wouldn't have from there. Mm. So both of you, you're not from the adventure side or tourist attraction side. So you're from the scientific based side and uh, entrepreneurship. And uh, yeah, of course. And of course, you're both devoted to the sea. So where does this passion come from? Thomas, we start again with you. Uh, I always had great interest in, in geosciences. Uh, when, when I was a teenager, I already experimented with 
uh, with sextons and astronomical navigation. So astronomical navigation at sea. And uh, later on, I, I discovered as well, this is an excellent opportunity to have international cooperation at sea. Jan, where's your passion for the sea from? Yeah, I mean, I was born and raised in Schleswig-Holstein and Schleswig-Holstein is, is surrounded by oceans. We, we have the North Sea, so I was born there. I made it actually for my, for my studies to the Baltic Sea sites, to, to Kiel and ocean walls all the time around. And I think that's a big part of, of what was going, going on while I was uh, diving deeper into, into this field. And yeah, I also um, got quite some touch points already during my studies for the topic of ammunition in our ocean. It's a very big topic um, here, here in Germany, 1.6 million tons. And, and I was so fascinated um, about this, uh, this area where so much is, is unknown known still. And I think that was driving me into this, this direction. Yeah, thank you. Jan, you just uh, gave us an overview where your passion comes from. And uh, right now you work for this passion. And uh, so what's your mission today in terms of your profession? Yeah, I mean, uh, we are working since around almost 15 years on the topic of geodata. And um, well, we started several research projects also in the field of underwater data. And we realized that there's huge potential for um, uh, application uh, development and for introducing cloud technologies for applying artificial uh, intelligence and developing something like a blue data economy. And um, that's also something that we are driving, driving forward um, from a geodata perspective, from a cloud computing uh, perspective. Thank you. We'll hear more about that blue data economy later, that talk. So uh, first, uh, again, the question um, to you, Thomas. So what's your mission? Yeah, the, um, in my view, the seas are, are crucial for the, for the well-being of mankind. And uh, this includes also the, in, the whole environment. Um, more than 90% of the, uh, the world trade passes through the seas. And this is very important for Germany and all, and, and all over the world. And also, of course, uh, the seas are the core climate sector. And to, be, um, uh, to have a sustainable use and the pr protection of the seas aligned and combined and find solutions to do both. This is my mission in that. Okay. So the oceans are important for the environment, for humans, of course, you just mentioned it, um, Thomas. And um, yeah, so maybe we start with, um, you, we just talked about your passion and profession and mission. So let's start with exactly what hydrography is and why this field of hydrography is so important um, to us from your point of view. Give us there a short insight in your work, please. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, when I try to in, introduce hydrography, it's, uh, I don't want to explain it because this starts getting technical. Uh, hydrography is not a prominent profession. It's usually stays a bit in the background. Um, but it's the prerequisite for all types of uses and protections you want to do at sea. Without hydrography, you cannot uh, sail at sea. You cannot, because you don't know how deep it is, where are the shallow areas, you cannot go fishing, you cannot uh, build anything like uh, wind farms at uh, offshore, or uh, you cannot protect the coast, um, you cannot predict flood, uh, flood, flooding warnings. And so I always say hydrography is the key to the sea. So you have to use hydrography to unlock the sea. This is a, a rather simple explanation. Okay, so unlock the sea. Yeah, that's a good um, image. So what, what, um, what, where do you work actually as a hydrographer usually? Or how many hydrographers do we have in Germany? Because I don't think it's a very popular profession or is it or just explain it to me because i'm a journalist i have no idea <laughs> yeah then at the uh, um, well, well there are there are several professionalist uh, professional branches within hydrography but uh, many of them do um hydrographic surveying so they they go at sea or use other remote sensing methods to to measure the the, the depth and and the structure of the ocean floor and the whole water column above the seafloor. Uh, and 
Some do nautical charting, producing nautical charts in digital or in paper so that the uh, the mariners can safely sail at sea. Um, uh, but uh, there are also other others uh, for, as I said, coastal protection that, that work in that field or uh, offshore industry. And um, there's, um, there they are from, from governmental, scientific side, there are some that do um, the service providers or manufacturers that do art and software. Um, and in Germany, I think uh, the number of people working in this core field are uh, uh, four digits, like one, one to 2,000 maybe. Oh. Uh, but uh, the very good thing is that it's you work very international. So when you do this, you can, uh, you can go abroad, you can go at sea or stay at, onshore. And as the the seas are not limited by boundaries, um, are open more or less. You can you, you have to to liaise with others and be international. That field, so you you can go abroad if you do this. Hmm. Thank you for bringing us closer to the profession of the hydrographer. And uh, Jan, you are an environmental geographer and you are equally committed to protecting the oceans on the one hand. And as entrepreneur, you work to use the latest technologies to explore and of course also protect the sea. So how do you work with um, hydrographers? That brings us of course also closer to your, um, to your um, company and your work. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, hydrographers are for us um, the key to to understand uh, the the ocean. We just heard it uh, already. It's an extremely fascinating uh, profession because I'm coming from the field of terrestrial geodata, like uh, remote sensing based on satellites, on airplane, and uh, there we live in the optic world. Um, in the ocean, we live in the acoustic uh, world. So based um, on acoustics, we create images, we create um, elevation models, we um, understand the, the sea floor in different kinds of um, directions. And what hydrographers do, they are delivering uh, us the information or the data, um, which we transform into information uh, with our uh, technologies. So um, everything what the BSA, for example, is doing or what the private industry is doing out there is large scale information and the information is getting um, bigger and bigger. Um, that tendencies into autonomous uh, systems, uh, which can survey more and more areas, which can create higher resolution uh, data sets. And all of this uh, needs new ways of thinking of how to analyze this kind of data. And yeah, with our company, what we are doing is to build uh, new technologies to um, apply um, technologies and approaches from other fields, maybe, um, into the hydrographic uh, domain. And it makes it extremely interesting because um, if you're a hydrographer, you're still an explorer. We heard already that we don't know that much, actually, um, of our oceans. And uh, I think our terrestrial areas are quite known, um, but the oceans are still, to us, uh, quite often unknown, unknown fields. That's unbelievable because we, we go into space, we measure everything. I, I think we know everything about our planet we live in, but we don't know about the oceans who are such a big um, area here around our planet. That's unbelievable. So um, let's have a look to the marine conservation and uh, where do you see the major challenges in in the international marine conservation and of course also how do you contribute to generating more knowledge about these um these challenges maybe we start again with you jan yeah i think um we are running into an age where um we use or will use our ocean in a totally different way like we did it actually the last um 50 50 years so um if you want to say it in a, in a negative way, it's some kind of industrialization of our oceans um, that will, will happen. Um, on the other side, um, it is supporting us in the energy transition. Um, it is supporting us, hopefully, in, in fighting it against climate change by um, storing CO2 in different kinds of uh, ways, in biological and, and also other ways. So um, it's, I think, now for us extremely important to understand the ocean as good as possible when we start this big infrastructure changes in our ocean. So what we see from an economic um, perspective is um, a shift um, of uh, big and really large scale finances 
into renewable energies, into an offshore wind. Um, just to, um, two days ago, we uh, heard about the auction that happened um, there for four German um, offshore wind farm areas, um, which uh, in the end uh, led to 12 billion um, uh, the euro. And so there is a totally new way of how um, our oceans um, will support us and we will use our ocean. And for protecting them, we need to understand it. We need to understand um, what are the effects of the infrastructure that we are bringing in there, what are the effects um, of um, um, general um, dealing with our oceans. And I think that's where um, we come into play on the one side regarding the hydrography, on the other side, transforming uh, yeah, data into, into information that is valuable for this topic. Mm. Yeah, for me, sometimes it's unbelievable because I only read news or, yeah, collect or see data or informations from worldwide and I see those amounts of plastic waste in the oceans and the problem that it is still um, put into the oceans every day. I see the warming of the oceans. There was some news alerts last week in the north. Of course, you know about that. And we have, uh, I signed a petition against uh, deep sea mining, for example. I don't know if it helps a lot, but there are so many things that um, really um, bring bring us problems as humans here on this on this um, planet. And uh, Thomas, where do you see the major challenges? Are there some more or some you would like to mention or add here? Yes, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the challenges indeed are to to be to be able to pr provide sufficient information and uh, and make use of it to uh, to improve uh, the way we are using and trying to protect the seas. Uh, there's, we, we still miss a lot of information uh, uh, about this 70% of uh, the Earth's surface. And uh, this, uh, this is something where we, uh, on, in all fields of, uh, of, uh, of marine sciences, we have to, uh, to, to join and, and try to, to do more on this field. And uh, the, uh, the part that hydrography plays in that is is to, to, to prepare and provide all the, the data in a, in a way in a, that it's usable and easy to use for all uh, those different kinds and to to provide this is not not easy to to do this when you are at land it's much easier to, to survey uh, an area uh, but if you if you look at the seafloor you usually don't see it and this is something is much more complicated, but also this is the interesting part uh, as well. And uh, we use several platforms like the uh, the survey vessel behind me, um, but we are developing as well uh, autonomous surface vehicles and and unmanned underwater vehicles and so on to 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 make use of different ways. Also, satellite derived uh, depthometry and all all these uh, these um, measures are being done to improve. Our information and make it uh, make it more sustainable to retrieve. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then we we are working on on uh, on also on on developments uh, that uh, are related to to shipping and other uses of this data. And we call it S one hundred. S one hundred. This is just a, an abbreviation, but it stands for Worldwide Uniform Standard for Electronic Navigational Charts. And these are um, well, electronic charts that are, are used for decades already and on land at sea. But the big leap is that, that it's um, a, a uniform usability of all different kinds of data. So um, this will lead to a safe than, safer navigation, but also to a more efficient, more sustainable uh, uh, shipping with lower emissions. Okay, so you're just talking about the new... S100 standard, no? And uh, okay, so what exactly does it do? It's it's more exactly you just mentioned. It's protecting some uh, ways, or yeah, it's um, um, maybe it's uh, we, are, we can compare it with uh, a, a legal brief, the legal system for children, where the, um, the with this new system you can combine different types of data and just build your your own. The structure or the the, uh, the way you you need it, so it's more individual, tailor made to those users. This is one thing, and you can um, uh, thus Im 
make much more use out of it. I would like to give you an example. If you combine detailed death information, maybe in the River Elbe, um, and uh, a, the, the information about the currents and the water level, which is changing currently, uh, constantly but due to the tides, um, you can derive much uh, really uh, tailored to one vessel the information that, that, that this ship can use to reduce emissions to uh, say much more efficient when you um, when you know exactly how deep it is you can um, have a, have a, a, a more payload on board which means uh, this is more efficient uh, but you also can reduce em use emissions because um, sailing in shallow areas can uh, you may need up to 30 percent more of fuel to sail in these areas. So this is really uh, a, a big change. And this is just one example for three types of data. And this is a multiple uh, spectrum, this. So that's immense. So when can the shipping expect that new standard? A, a few months ago, the International Maritime Organization just adopted uh, this, uh, this new system, which is important because the IMO Uh, is the international shipping organization that has to uh, to regulate what shipping uh, uh, has, has to do in, in navigation. And then uh, th they said, well, the implementation phase is from 2026 to 2029. So in three years' time only, we have to provide all the data in that format, which is quite demanding, but it's also demanding for, for shipping. The, the, you have to produce new hardware on board, new software, And uh, for, for quite a while, we will have both systems on board of the vessel because they they will not at once uh, just just like this change all the equipment. Uh, so a, a re really big effort currently going on, and by the end of the decade, we will have this uh, run in, uh, up and running. Wow! Exciting, immense change that will happen then. So um, Jan. Um, what are your task areas, just to bring you closer to our interview attendees or visitors to get to know you better? Um, we heard a lot of things. Thomas um, explained us what he does and what standards he's working on and improvements. And yeah, so who are your clients? Who, who are you working for and what are you working on? That's a very, very good question. So. We are um, building a new type of software as a service uh, solutions for the maritime uh, domain. Um, they are referring actually to the uh, underwater underwater level. So it's, I think the um, first time that really software as a service is starting to um, uh, appear in the um, uh, underwater uh, domain. And um, what we are delivering is um, a technology that is able to handle first time the big uh, data one of the big complexities of um, this maritime data is you have tons of different kinds of uh, formats. You have many vendors of different kinds of systems. You have um, optical data, you have video data, you have acoustic data. So different kinds of information and um, data sets. And we bring them into to one system and we geo-index everything so that you can geospatially search um, this um, terra and, and petabytes of um, information. We are addressing mainly with our um, technologies right now, um, for example, the um, offshore wind uh, domain, um, because they are very data driven. Yeah? So it's a new domain that's just starting to perform. Um, we have um, enormous uh, potential, we have enormous um, uh, goals, political goals to bring um, offshore wind um, forward. And our platform is, for example, um, applied um, by big energy companies. Big energy companies, they are going to build a wind uh, park. So they contract then different kinds of serving institutions. The BSH um, quite often already provided information beforehand. So there's really a bunch of, of data coming from different kinds of entities. So now our platform allows to combine this data, to analyze this data, and to distribute it, for example, to engineering offices and to do calculations um, on this data. In the future, also, what we are going to go is um, to bring the idea of a data economy into our, our ocean. So um, for example, um, think about a data eBay. Yeah? So um, you need a platform where you actually bring your data in, where you upload it when you are a surveying company, and um, where you can actually um, sell it to uh, interested entities. 
But it's something that we see that um, more and more companies are acquiring more data than they're actually supposed to uh, in, in the contract. Um, and um, this is our idea to establish, um, based on cloud technologies, a data economy, where data can be used not for one question, but maybe for five to 10, 20, 50 questions. Because one very specific of our um, uh, world is in the hydrography that um, data acquisition is very uh, expensive. So when you think about satellite data, it's something that you um, get for free in the Copernicus um, program, for example. But when you talk about high resolution underwater data, um, you can spend 50, 100,000 euros per day if you have um, ships which are offshore and which are acquiring um, data in very um, small, small areas. For example. And this makes data extremely, extremely valuable. And what we still see that data is acquired for solving one task, but it can solve 10 questions. And um, making also this data accessible, that's also something. For example, in, in science, uh, lots of data is produced also in um, the um, underwater uh, domain. And for sure, it's uploaded to um, portals like Pangea and, and this kind of things. But still, it doesn't mean that's accessible. So we are working on ways of ingesting this kind of information. Um, in the Maryspace project, for example, we are working on standards, how to describe sensors, how to describe underwater data. Um, to make it usable for um, industrial, um, commercial, and also scientific uh, use cases as well. Wow, also very immense, exciting, huge field you're working on. And uh, you also mentioned mentioned that you use to geo-index the maritime data. So um, could you just explain that part again to us, what you mean with geo-indexing in um, that way? Yeah, I think that's a it's one of the one of very core problems actually finding data in the maritime uh, domain. You very often have classical folder structures, and the folder and the name of the file actually indicates where where it's located. Um, what we do, we um, support in our platform technology um, the um, understanding of raw data. So we have many different kinds of raw data formats. And as soon as you um, upload data, an automated process is happening, which um, um, builds actually the envelope where the data is located, brings into the map. And this means you can search data. And this is still something that in the um, maritime world is um, usually done on, on a high complex uh, level because cloud is still in this domain, um, um, more new technology. Um, but you need for this, you need um, expertise. You need expertise in how to build very scalable systems because we are talking um, uh, about uh, petabyte uh, plus uh, ranges when you um, deal with, with ocean data. And mm -hmm. yeah, we apply and use cloud technologies. We use um, open source technologies from the Apache Foundation, mm -hmm. for example, Apache Spark, Apache Sedona, bring all these technologies with uh, Kubernetes in the microservice world, in the orchestrator world um, together. And yeah, bringing some kind of new smart geo-intelligence into the, the underwater world, combining it with the complexity of scalable cloud systems. Wow. And this is all part of the blue economy you're working on, you mentioned at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, we are also coordinating, and the BSH is also an associated partner in this, the Maryspace X uh, project. So um, it's part of the GAIA-X initiative. Um, so the idea of um, establishing a data economy and um, it's a funded project from our um, Ministry of uh, Economy. And uh, it has a volume of around 15 million euros, so very substantial. So we um, coordinated it and we um, are coordinating this project. And this project has the idea to set some kind of standards for how to trade, for example, um, the maritime data, how to describe um, maritime data. And we see there's a huge potential for really um, the blue data economy. Um, just to give you some some figures, so the the ocean industries today, and uh, the value of the ocean is uh, when you compare it to national um, uh, numbers, uh, has a GDP that's on the seventh level in the world compared to a national state. So it's tremendously big, and um, offshore wind is actually just simply uh, growing this. And um, I'm curious where we will be in five to ten years in comparison to national uh, GDP, um, but the ocean is just extremely big and you need to start thinking about um, a data economy um, and to trade data and to use data for all different kinds of purposes going into the direction of machine learning we saw big advancements for example in the in the classical chat gpt world but also all this can be applied um, in different kind of ways to the underwater world yeah so um nvidia just uh, launched um, uh, for example the physics ai so 
building actually physical systems based on on AI, based on observations data. That's something that we are going to test um, uh, with NVIDIA, for example, in the next uh, month. So there's big technology improvements that are going um, into the ocean, driven really by, by offshore wind, I would say. Thank you very much, Jan. Thomas, Jan is talking about big improvements, the evolution of data, IA is coming, and you also were talking about the new standard S100, which is coming within the next years. So compare shipping today with shipping in 25 uh, um, years or 20 years from now. We usually ask the question to people who are working in smart cities. So how do you see the city of the future? How do you think uh, will it will it develop? So how do you think will it develop how we use the oceans for shipping, for example, or for yeah, collecting more data? I mean, now regarding regarding shipping, I'm sure that there's uh, that if people or our children in 25 years would look at this, well, they will say, oh, this. The navigation was only two-dimensional. When you look, uh, you, you had uh, paper charts or, or flat screens with digital data, and the mariners at sea had to, to deal with all this information, separated information on their own. In the, in the future, I see as a, uh, we will break, break these two-dimensional uh, presentations into uh, multi-dimensional systems where we want to, to provide uh, the mariner with information um, that, for example, we can use the bridge windows like an overhead display uh, to show the navigational aid for the boys at sea, where in the future, probably most of those boys will not be there, will be there only virtually. So you, you, you have to use this system and you can, you can improve the safety uh, for for the navigation by them uh, as well. So um, there will be uh, this improvement in the navigation, and especially together with S100 in place, this will will give a, a, a have a big momentum on this development. And uh, we will have new fuels as we already see the developments. Um, how can we sail in the future uh, at sea, and how can we uh, combine this? The, the, the stages of autonomy, of autonomous vessels, those that are sailing completely independently with those that are still manned, and all these stages in between are important. And this is a complex thing. If if you look at, 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 at the, the, the traffic on land, um, imagine on uh, you have only autonomous vehicles, much easier than a combination with individuals, uh, people driving a car, people passing along, cycling, and this cause this combined traffic. This is the most complex thing, complex thing, and at sea, uh, of course, as well. We need to find solutions. We will find solutions for that in, in this in the next decade. So, uh, I see a huge change uh, regarding shipping in this field, and um, for the uh, for, for the hydrography, we will have uh, new and extended ways of producing or, or getting gathering data They're using uh, satellites autonomous drones um, using uh, unmanned underwater vehicles deriving not only acoustic data but optical data um, and this this leads to much more information more detailed information and, and uh, for all the different types of uses, as as uh, Jan said, uh, doing this quite uh, quite uh, expensive uh, task to make use of the data for for all different types of uses. And this this is uh, ahead in the, in the in the near future. And Jan, what do you think? Our oceans in about twenty years or twenty five will they be much better off um, when we look at these developments? Um, yeah, what do you think will get better? I'm much better off, so I think that's a very difficult question. I mean, we are going into a different usage and a very more intense usage of the ocean. Um, if it's simply good for the environment, I would doubt that. Uh, I think we have to um, find a good compromise with um, 
without harming the environment uh, too much. And um, what I see, and this is the case of what Thomas just mentioned, um, the topic of autonomous. So uh, this is something that uh, will be used a lot because costs have to go, go down just from an economical uh, perspective. Still, it's quite expensive to conduct surveys um, with ships and due to all these infrastructure improvements that we are um, we will see in the next um, 10, 20 years, um, costs is a highly driver of innovation. And that's what we already see, see today, that autonomous systems are starting getting into play. There are early adopters who start to bring them in scale actually into the oceans um, already. And yeah, I think um, what we also talked about, um, we need to get as much information to protect also our oceans and to find a common usage um, that's, that's not harming um, our environment too much. Thank you. So we are at the end of this expert talk. Um, so um, I'm very happy that um, we introduced that new topic of maritime solutions which will be represented at Interdure this year for the first time in an extra area in Hall 26 in, at Interdure in Berlin. And of course, we will see you both there too, Thomas, um, with the German Hydrographic Society. And Jan, you will be there also with your company, North IO. And uh, yeah, we're really happy to see you there. And uh, yeah. What do you think? What do you expect? Are you happy f that Intergeo has that special topic this year? Uh, from, my, from my side, I'm, I'm definitely happy. I think uh, we need to bring more ocean actually to the graphical uh, geo, uh, geospatial uh, world. And it will it will happen. I mean, we're going to use the ocean in a different way. And it is geo data in, in some way. And um, yeah, we try already with our company to be a bit the um, uh, the binding element between these this two worlds. And I'm really looking forward to, to this interview, but also maybe to the next ones, maybe where Ocean plays an even more prominent role. Thank you. Thomas, you're also looking forward to interview? Yeah, yeah very much so. I'm, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's an excellent op opportunity to, to widen the, the horizon of the Yeah, rather often uh, land-oriented colleagues, uh, if I might say that, and uh, and the topics as well. And uh, but there are so so many similarities, and parts where we can learn from each other. So to have both parts uh, present there and and have the the network among us is is really a crucial thing and and uh, an excellent opportunity at at Intergeo. And uh, um, I hope that those uh, land based uh, colleagues uh, will have the chance to get a to get a glance beyond the shoreline to the to the beautiful sea okay so thank you very much this was our deep dive uh, about maritime solutions at interdeo tv these were my experts thomas Deling and jan Wendt. thank you very much for joining us it was a pleasure and thank you very much yeah and we will see you again in october in berlin 